Hello everyone and welcome back to Monster Mania, part of the Jesse Heck Creative Collection. Today we are going over the Bella Lugosi Dracula, the Invisible Man, and the Wolf Man from Jada Toys. Before we begin, make sure to click that like button and claw that subscribe button. Now let's get to it. So here's the box for the Wolfman. I really like how he looks inside the box with all the accessories. The Wolfman logo is down here. Universal Monster logo up here. On the side, we have the Universal Monsters all in a lineup. We have the New Wave, only two figures. That's kind of a shame. I wish there were more. All the legal aids on the bottom, all the logos on the top. We don't see the Wolfman on this side, which is kind of weird. So let's check out the Wolfman and see how he howls. The Wolfman head sculpt here is all right for me. He looks kind of bored or almost, you know, too relaxed in a way. Maybe he's been having some of that, you know, green stuff. Anyways, I like the hair sculpt. It's really nicely done. The teeth are pretty good. And the nose is awesome, too. I like when it transitions, you know, from a side profile for a human nose, but also for a sort of more like an actual wolf nose. Very nice touch. The ears look pretty cool. It's a nice head sculpt, even with those eyes. The body looks really nice and textured. I love how this looks. It isn't flat like most figures would be. It has a very nice sort of swept down texture. Really cool for the shirt. The hands are really neat, too. The claws and really cool and scary. The belt has some nice detail in it. And I love how detailed this figure is. Very well done for this and even the pockets look great too. Awesome. The pants look awesome. I love the shading and shadowing on them. Really well done. The color is nice too and the texture is insane. I mean look at that. It's a really great texture and feels wonderful. Coming down to the feet, they look great. The claws are awesome. There is some writing on the bottom but that's okay. There's also pins on here but that's okay as well. I'm kind of used to that for action figures. The texturing on the feet look wonderful and the shading looks great too. I have no real complaints about the legs, but my only thing is I wish the entire clothing set was more tattered. Maybe we'll get that for another figure, but this body is wonderful for this figure so far. No real complaints. As far as accessories goes, he comes with this head that fits really well with the existing hands. I love this so much. It looks awesome. Same with Dracula. He's looking down on a victim, and it's great. Really well done with the hands, and especially the head. It looks awesome and is super cool. Basically the same kind of sculpting and painting method as the other head, but way fiercer eyes and teeth. You just swivel over here and then back not really that much. Forward pretty okay all the way around. This guy is really creepy and I love it so much. He does come with alternate holding hands for accessories. They do swivel and then hinge the side to side kind of way and this one swivels and the hinges the sort of regular kind of way. Pretty nice on these hands and looking really good. He comes with a cane or walking stick. It fits really good in this hand over here but not so much in this hand over here. That's a shame these fingers are kind of pinched together anyway. Ways. It does fit pretty okay with this hand, but I digress. Moving them aside, the cane is really cool. It has the wolf bearing its teeth on the top and a kind of a star underneath the fur. It looks very awesome and neat. The paint is pretty okay on it too. It's a shame it can't fit into this hand. That's a bummer. He also comes with a bear trap, or in this case, a wolf trap. It fits well in this hand very nicely. The poor other hand cannot catch a break. Should have been a fist, actually. Yeah, it's a nice kind of piece. It looks really cool. There's actually a real metal chain on here. This does come off though at times so you just clip it back in and it's okay but don't worry the stress will break it over time. These pieces over here do kind of clamp together and move and shift. I'm just worried this will break eventually seeing as it is kind of falling apart now in a way but yeah it's a nice piece with a little better construction it could be better and also it could look more metal. That's really my biggest complaint. It looks kind of rusty and kind of silvery but not totally metal. That's a shame. As far as articulation goes for the wolf man. The head can go left and right and also back, not really that far. Forward, pretty okay. It's some nice articulation, some nice wobble all the way around. You do get up this far on the arm and down all the way around. It is a bit loose on mine for some reason. Maybe that's your case or whatever. Goes around this far, at least all the way on the bicep. We do get a double jointed pin arm that goes up this far with the elbow and out and swivel and then up and down over here on the claw and then all the way around over here and back and forward. And we do get around here, back, forward it's a nice back crunch. Pretty well. Hole over here, though. Forward crunch. Nice over here. No real hole. That's interesting. You do get splits this far. Pretty nice. And in, and then up. Not really that far. And back. Not really that far. Hindered by the pants. And double jointed knee. This much over here. Get a swivel over here. Swivel down here. And down, and up, and then pivot with two peg holes on the feet. Very nice looking figure with some pretty good accessories. Looks really cool. I just wish that the head he came with initially was a little more fierce, and also the clothes were a little more tattered. Here's the invisible 
Invisible Man! Wait, I can see him. I want a refund! Anyways, the Invisible Man's logo is on the bottom. He looks really nice in this sort of coat, cloak, bathrobe kind of thing, I would guess. He had a hat, a bunch of accessories, a bunch of gloves, a beaker, a book, everything under the sun. We also have the monsters on the side. You have the two figures in the wave on the back. All the legalese. No picture over here. I wish there was one. Now let's open the Invisible Man and see what we can see. The head of the Invisible Man looks really nice. I love how this thing is molded and painted. It's very soft on the paint, but very hard on the detail. I love the texture on this, and it's beautiful. The wrappings are amazing looking, and it makes you want a mummy from the really bad. It's gonna look so cool. On the top, we have a little scar over here. I'm not sure what that is, maybe. Interesting. Could be something with the mold or whatever, or the character. The eyeglasses look really nice. They are immovable, so that's a shame, but it's pretty cool anyways. I love the look of the robe. The checkered pattern is really nice. It's a very sort of flowing kind of garment. Looks really nice. We have some really cool cuffs over here with a checkered pattern and we also have a sort of ascot he has the gloves are really neat also and that's really cool i love how this thing looks it's very rubbery texture and is great very nice lifting up the flap of the robe we do see that he has a really nice pair of pants over here that's awesome they're more like pj pants than anything they're teal they have this nice kind of black and red coloration stripes going throughout they look pretty cool there are pins on them he's wearing these like loafers for his shoes too very casual very chill for a guy who probably doesn't have to wear clothes at all to do what he does. As far as accessories goes, he comes with a hat that you could fit on him. I like this kind of thing. It looks really cool. Maybe it could work on Spider-Man Noir. Who knows? He has a great hat anyways and looks super cool. <laughs> Makes him look really distinguished and awesome. Wearing a bathrobe with a fancy hat. That's yeah, kind of funny. You also have a hand for saying hello and a hand for saying goodbye. They do swivel and then hinge back and forth and then swivel and then hinge back and forth. I wish someone would make a waving hand that like waved like this. That'd be great. Maybe someday, Jada. He also comes with a beaker and a book. The book is fine, I guess. Not really readable or anything. It's just clothes. Nice binding, though, I guess. It looks bookish enough to be fine, I would think. The beaker is another story, though. It's empty, which means the serum has taken effect and he's now invisible. He's drinking it. Oh, no. No, it's just because I didn't put any fluid or anything cool looking inside the beaker. I've seen it done with Marvel Legends. Jada can do it as well. It would have been great to have something in there, which would have been fine, but clear beaker, invisible man, invisible clear beaker. You get the picture. Let's move on. One of the more ingenious parts about an action figure that's invisible is that you can only see the clothes he wears and not the figure underneath, metaphorically. Case in point, with this beautiful effect, one of two, that showcases his invisibility, this effect with the double glove coming off, it's wonderful, swivel and down and up to make it look like a good effect. You line up this hole over here with this hole over here, thus so, and it looks amazing. Beautiful job on this effect, and basically perfect to the untrained eye. The second effect, piece is amazingly done as well. He's unwrapping the bandages from his head, which is awesome. I love how this looks. He has another hand combing his hair, or at least ruffling it a little bit, getting all the weird pieces of mummy wrap out of it. This is awesome and wonderfully done. It's made by having a little ball cup for the head underneath all this wrapping. You have to cheat the camera a little bit to make it work, but when it works, it works really well. This is great and is super cool. I'm very happy about all this. The hand does swivel a little bit left and right and then goes up and down a tiny bit, You, but you wouldn't really want to move it that much when you get it into a good pose. It's fine where it is. As far as articulation goes for the Invisible Man, the head can go left and right and back and forward very well all the way around really nicely, both top and and bottom very cool up this far and down all the way around it's in swivel over here pretty much and then a double joint elbow pins that's fine by me looking really cool over here we also get a swivel over here at the waist and then back and forward there is some sort of cut over here that's fine I guess you can kind of move this up and down a little bit as far as the sort of waistcoat goes get out this far really nicely doesn't really hinder it at all that much really far and in up this far and back pretty far as well you get some double jointed knee going up like this. Maybe one more click. I can get it. I don't know. Yeah, I can get it. There it is. That was kind of weird for me. Up this far very nicely. Hindered a little bit by the cloak though, sadly. I'm going to swivel over here. No swivel down here. Down and up not that much. And not really that much pivot either. And two pegos upon the feet. Somewhat static from the waist down, but really nice from the waist up. Looking really cool, this Invisible Man. I love this figure so much. Probably one of the best in the entire line, just because of the accessories and look. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it.
And now we come to the second Dracula, the Bela Lugosi version. Very nice looking front over here. Bela Lugosi's portrait with a logo for Lugosi. A Dracula logo, a new one over here. And some bats and spider webs in the corner. The Jada over here. We have an even better Dracula. My favorite Dracula logo they've done so far on this. Very nice. On the back, all the legal leaves with no pictures of what's inside. On the side, we get some really cool shots from the film. Really good looking. And yeah, this pose, I was right about that. With the lady and the guy. And then we got the cape and we got him doing a little pose, another hypnotizing pose, his face over here, and the full get up over here. On the other side, we have an autograph from Bela Lugosi. Very nicely done. And on the bottom, we have one more Dracula logo. And this is beautiful. Really great, Jada. Great job. Let's see what's inside. The side of the box is magnetic, opening it up like so. I don't want to wreck it or anything. So here's the inside from one side. A street lamp with a bunch of posters over here. It's pretty cool. And also the pieces you get inside, the accessories and stuff and here he is inside if you can see him i'm not going to break this thing it's very fragile i would believe there's bela lugosi as dracula over here looking awesome there's a tab you can pull for the accessories oh that's great really neat like a sort of coffin kind of deal really cool just gotta figure out how to sort of pull it in a way it won't really break anything another tab you pull to pull the accessories out of the box i would think I'm not sure why it's kind of stuck inside maybe that's just my model but yeah a little more wiggling We'll get it out. That's pretty fine. Pulling him out of the box reveals all the accessories in a nice little detail over here. The interior is also a plush coffin. Really beautiful and very funny. This is just above and beyond. And getting Bela out is pretty simple. Just sort of pull from the side. And it made it really easy to get the character out of the box. And yeah, that is shaped like a coffin. Really wonderful. And here's a Bela Lugosi. Now let's open him and see what's what. At first hypnotizing glance, I do think this head sculpt looks really great even with out the printed tech however i think that would have been much better as this hand painted stuff isn't really up to snuff missing some sides of the hair the eyes look like they're printed the wrong place on the head and there's a missing chunk of the eyebrow too which is kind of a shame the lips look there i would guess but yeah this might be kind of a dud even though i do like the stage makeup look it kind of looks sort of surreal and unnatural the hair is fine but the paint on it it's kind of sloppy and all over the place for something that is the main feature of a figure you'd want to get that right and this just isn't in some places. Aside from some small differences, we've always seen this body sculpt as far as Dracula goes, so I won't be going over it that much, nor the articulation. Just know it's basically the same thing from the ground up. It's just missing the medallion as far as it goes on the chest, and that's basically it. There are some added chains of gold over here, and that's basically it. Yeah, it's nice. There are some cool grippy hands, though, that have some weird warts on it. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But yeah, it's nice for what I have. The hands he comes with have really noodly weird fingers. I'm not sure if they're misshapen or not. They swivel and then hinge back and forth. I do wish they weren't painted, though. And yeah, that's kind of a bummer with them. Just watch out for your nails on them. Yeah, that can just wreck the paint. He comes with two holding hands that look more likely to hold little pamphlets and stuff that he will come with later. They do swivel and then hinge. I Again, they need to be the same plastic color as this plastic is. Not painted, please. That'd be great. The head can also swivel left and right, go back and forth, and side to side pretty nicely. It's a normal head and works out well. He lastly comes with a pair of outstretched scary hands and another head that is a little bit better, but when you look at it from the right angle, it just looks like he's sort of wall-eyed. Kind of weird. Very strange for this head. And the paint, again, isn't really that great as far as I'm concerned. You do get a swivel, and then you do get a side to side all the way around around back forward it's just okay the hands are just okay as well back and forward with this it's a shame i wanted this figure to be great and it isn't and finally the best part and absolute saving grace of the figure we have this cape that has a really nice touch to it a wired interior i've never experienced wired capes before and this is a blast i love how this thing works functions and moves sure it's a bit heavy but you can pose it in any way you want and make it look like a really cool glowing cape on the back or I have him do some kind of scary thing. I just think billow. My only issue for this cape is that it is not on the other Dracula. Otherwise, it's perfect. If this was red and on the other Dracula, it would be phenomenal. The wire goes all the way down and around the cape really nicely so you can get into a variety of poses and make Dracula look excellent. There's also a really cute note card on how to put it on him if you didn't know how to work action figures. This is great for newcomers or fans of Bela Lugosi. And lastly, as a bonus, we have a 
bunch of little pictures of Bell Lugosi that are posters for films he's been in. We have two versions over here of an in-person appearance with Bell Dracula, Lugosi, one at the Vista Theater, and another that I can't read where it's at on here. That's a shame. But we also have an RKO Capital News article on it promoting that as well as an in-person appearance. Again, looks really nice at the Norva Theater. Pretty cool. We also have the vampire play Bell Lugosi Dracula on Locust Street Theater in May. This one's right after Christmas over here. This one's on December 8th, and they're hitting some kind of weird Christmas spring vibe. Nothing for Halloween, which is kind of funny, but I really appreciate these posters, and they all look excellent. And here is the back of the posters. They look really cool in this way. There is some nice texturing going all the way around them, except on the smaller white one, but that's fine. I guess you can't win them all. He can also hold the posters, or at least the big poster in his hands, provided he's holding it with both hands, and it works pretty well, but I'm not even sure why you'd have the main actor advertise their own movie. The Wolfman stands at about six inches tall or so. The Invisible Man stands at just under six inches tall, while Bela Lugosi Dracula stands a tiny bit above six inches. They all look really cool together, and I'm glad to add to the Universal Monsters lineup. Here are all the Universal Monsters lined up. The Draculas look good together, but I do find with a wired cape, the original would be much better. The Creature of the Black Lagoon looks nice next to the Wolfman. Pretty cool, but just dwarfs him in coolness as well as height. And the Invisible Man and the glow-in-the-dark Creature of the Black Lagoon look good together with their different transparencies of skin. Overall, these are some pretty interesting figures with a lot of noticeable flaws. The Wolfman is nice. I'm not a fan of the original head, though, and the holding hands aren't really needed. The cane I don't think really works for the character and the bear trap is all right but kind of forgettable. It's disappointing to me that the default hands and alternate head are the way to go for this figure and accessories couldn't be cooked up that were better than what we have. The Invisible Man is the best figure here, but even he has a couple flaws here and there. There are some strange articulation points, as well as the lackluster book and beaker that we've seen before from other companies that have done it better. I love the hat, though, and the paint and sculpt are on point. The invisible accessories are where it's at, and I love them, even though I can't use them at the same time. Bela Lugosi Dracula is a nice figure, but the quality control of mine puts him down a peg or so. I do appreciate all the extras that come with him, especially the box and the post but the figure is kind of lackluster. The cape is the best part about him, and it isn't even on him when you open the box. The alternate head and the head existing aren't really that great either. The hands are just okay. And in a weird way, I think with all this stuff, I do kind of prefer the traditional Dracula that I reviewed last week. This is a nice figure, but not the best overall. I highly recommend picking up an Invisible Man. He's one of the best figures in the line so far. The Wolfman is pretty okay. Maybe pick him up. And Bay Lugosi Dracula, depending depending on the paint and sculpt of him, I would pick him up as well for the accessories and the wired cape. But make no mistake, as these monsters may be few, their issues are many as Monster Mania continues. So which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, Jesse Heck Creative. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessiehackcreative.com for more reviews like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and do keep being creative. Stay tuned.